Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. Welcome back into Sports Fanatic News as we're here with the next Sixers podcast, as we're here to talk about the Ben Simmons saga and where it is currently, and also how we think that affects the team's ceiling when it comes to this overall season that we are uh, doing very good recently, 8-2, and two, obviously on a five-game winning streak. Joel Embiid is, a, is the MVP right now, in my opinion, but that's something we can maybe add at the end of the podcast as an extra. Um, but, Andrew, first and foremost, how, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm trying to stay warm. We're in the midst of a uh, snowstorm here in Oklahoma, so it's been a uh, it's been a cold last couple of days, and it's going to be, continue to be cold here till the weekend. So, just trying to stay warm here in Oklahoma. Yeah, uh, we had a snowstorm last week. It, it's been a little bit warmer, not not the best. Uh, where next week is the week in the Philadelphia area is supposed to get uh, a little bit warmer. We're supposed to have rain at the end of the week. That'll probably wash the snow away tomorrow and uh, Friday here. But we'll jump right into it. When it comes to Ben Simmons, at the beginning of the season, I think at this point, we thought he would probably have been moved for something where at the beginning of the season, I had more of the opinion of patience is a virtue with it so we can get the best deal. My question to you is, now that he's still here in February, and, and not being able to get another guy for it might affect the ceiling of the overall end goal of the team this year. What's your opinion now on February 2nd compared to what it was at season's beginning on if you like the whole patience is a virtue aspect of trading Ben Simmons? Yeah, I think you have to be patient with it. I have no issue with it. I know fans are getting upset and everything and want us to, to trade Simmons as soon as possible. But here's the thing. At this point, I, I think you'd agree, Simmons has lost trade value at this point. So the problem the team re- relies with now is you can't do the Simmons for whatever star straight up anymore. You can't do Simmons in a pick for a star anymore. It's got to be Simmons at another said player. And that said player at this point is what's holding the Sixers back from a trade. It's the out they uh, the team you're dealing with wants to add Max or wants to add add Thibel. That's where we're at right now, and that's why we're being patient. If if you ask Maury if he wants to trade Simmons tonight, oh he'd say absolutely probably. He wants to get rid of Simmons as soon as possible. But the problem is, and the, the reason why we're being patient is because of the extra pieces that are, are starting to be involved. And the rumor came out today, um, Bradley Bill's on the trade market, and the Sixers are willing to trade Simmons for Bill. But here's the thing. That this is what the holdup is. If you're going to ask the Sixers, would they do Simmons for Bill straight up? Yeah, obviously the Sixers will do that without second guessing that. But the problem is, you think the Wizards are going to do that trade? No, they're not going to do it. They'd be fools to do that trade. Uh, yeah, Bradley Bill for Simmons straight I up deal. So now Wizards. the Wizards are going to try to add a Maxi or a Thibel. And are you going to? I'm going to ask you: Are you going to trade Simmons and Maxi for Bradley Bill? No. No. Would I trade Simmons and Thibel for Bradley Beal though? Probably. As much as I love Matisse Thibel's defense, Maxi is going to probably be an all-star guard for years to come. Matisse Thibel is probably going to be a better version of Tony Allen for years to come, which is a very good thing, but it's easier to give up the better version of Tony Allen than a guy that's probably going to be potentially a top-five point guard as he continues to develop. Well, and here's my thing, though, like, a few of the Wizards are you doing Simmons and Thibel for Bill? Oh, I have no idea, but I'm saying if no, they do that, I'm, but I'm saying they're probably not doing that is the problem. Yeah. So they're probably looking at Simmons, Thibel, and let's say two first rounders. Now it becomes okay. I got to think about this. Am I going to do that deal? Yes, I will. Yeah, I would say right now. Too, I will do that. Our deal. First round picks wouldn't be even high because you got to think about it from that perspective. Your first, if you actually do as good as you want to do, which I think you would agree with this. If you do as good as you want to do, if you make that trade, your first round picks are practically second round picks anyway because of the end of the first yeah. round. So uh, they're not as valuable as people would first think. Well, especially if you're on out a lineup of Maxi, Curry, Beal, Harris, and then B, that's probably getting to the finals if, if I had to say yeah. so. No, I, so, yeah, I would think but I would here, definitely. The problem, too, you rely on those. I think if the Wizards, I think they're going to try to go after Maxi. So now you got to play back and forth here so at this point yes i'm okay with being patient because people think it's okay just get rid of simmons for this but it's 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 a lot more than that if it was that simple the deal would have been done by now maury's given us reasons to trust him and i actually heard an interesting take from stephen a smith he thinks it's actually not dale maury that's holding this trade back it's actually the 
ownership and Joshua Harris and the company there that is holding it back and directing Moy on on how to run this trade. So I thought that was an interesting take. If if you don't know what I'm talking about, I I, I highly recommend, I did see that. Yeah. I highly re- recommend looking it up because it actually did bring out a different twist on the whole situation and how this trade is going to go down. So I would recommend that. But my thing is. Listen, we all want this thing to be over with. Do the players want to be over with? Absolutely. You think they're tired of being asked about Simmons? Absolutely. You think Doc is that, uh, tired about, especially with the report coming out yesterday after the biggest, one of the biggest wins of the season? I think they're all tired of it, but the problem is it's just not that simple. That's why I think we have to be patient with it. maury has got reasons for us to believe him from his Houston days. He has reasons for us to believe him these days. I mean, think about he robbed the Mavericks there with that uh, Curry trade. So, I mean, right there, that's one reason. He obviously picked Maxi. There's another reason he picked Dybul. So he's given us plenty of reasons to trust him. So I would just say... Well, he also I mean, picked Isaiah of, Joe, who's looking yeah, like a good second-round pick. So. Exactly. So in terms of our old saying here a few years ago, just trust the process. It's going to work out. Well, was he undrafted? Was he a second-round pick? Or no, he was a second-round pick. He, he was, was second-round pick. Uh, yeah, they came and Paul Reed with the same second round. Okay, yeah. Who's, again, at least a very good G League yeah. player and has filled it in, in some a- yeah. aspects So. In the NBA, in Paul Reed, where I think, where where Joe Isaiah Joe honestly has done a little bit more than I think people would have thought this year, just because of the default of the Sixers not having the best shooting <laughs> when it comes yeah. to their bench. And then, real quick, my last reason to be patient too is, and I get it, uh, you know, one of the biggest cliches is playoff basketball is different than regular season. Is it? Yeah, it is. But the Sixers have proven they've beaten the Grizzlies without Embiid. They've beaten the Nets multiple times this year. They've beaten the Bucks. They can play with the best of the best without Simmons in the way that the roster is constructed right now. So I'm not in a rush to trade Simmons because you've already proved you can play with the best of the best. Here's the thing. You don't need to trade Simmons to add pieces. Now, I will sit here and say if, if Maury doesn't add side pieces, then yes, that is disappointing because you do have other pieces to move to get, let's say, an Eric Gordon type player. Um, yes, that is a guy I would highly recommend going after. That's why I threw him out there. But yeah, um, Rockets, yeah. here's my thing, though. Like, you can get Gordon without moving Simmons. You don't need Simmons for that deal. So that's why I will play the patient game with Simmons. But I fully expect and absolutely want some type of trade to make the team better at the deadline. So don't get my words constructed in that sense because you don't need to move Simmons. I'd be patient with the Simmons deal, but I highly recommend and fully expect a, some type of deal to be done by the deadline. Or even if you're not making a deal with Ben Simmons with the Kings, you could still call the Kings and say, well, Harrison Barnes is having a good season. And um, if we could trade yada, 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 what could you? The only problem with that is I don't know how the Sixers would be able to do that because Harrison Barnes doesn't get paid a lot of money. So that would that would fall into a problem category probably for the well, for the Sixers. But I, I mean, there's the thing. I mean, I like him as a role player, but if you're going to say let's go Harrison Barnes – for Niang and a future first, I'd probably do that deal. I think that Harrison makes- Barnes is a more consistent yeah. throughout his career player than uh, so, Niang. I think that I think that would make the money somewhat close. I don't know what fully Niang's making, but I'm sure he's not on the vet minimum or anything. I like Niang, but I mean, if you have an opportunity to make your roster better, I think you have to take that. Yeah, Eric Gordon, I know. I think he only spent like three million or something. Like he got, he has a very cheap contract. It might even be less than that. So you yeah, can. Gordon- fit him in to or you could do that young guy they got was it uh, Solinger or something like that and then like a future second yeah Jared Solinger and then a uh, second round pick or something like that and you could probably get Eric Gordon yeah I mean he's not going to be that hard to um to or J wait no yes are you talking about Solinger or Springer uh Springer sorry yeah J- and- yeah Jared Solinger's the dude from back in the day yeah Jaden Springer is uh who we were thinking of but you know that's a that's a throwback name but uh, <laughs> I actually, I will admit, I stand corrected. Niang is only getting three million dollars, so that trade would not go through. Oh yeah, that wouldn't work. Then he would work to get Eric Gordon, because that those numbers would be pretty equal. See, just because of size, I, I don't know if I do that deal because Gordon is more of a. I guess he can stretch three, but that that's yeah. Happy. I don't think you would have to either. You could also, if you want to, just say Ferk, you paid yeah. him a couple mil uh, to. To not really progress, so if you want to just trade him in a second, you could probably get Eric Gordon for that. Unless they restructure his contract recently, according to ESPN Trade Machine, uh, Gordon's getting eighteen point two million. Oh really? Oh, I didn't know that. So I don't know because 
right now your highest paid players are Harris, Simmons, and Bead. And then that those guys are making thirty plus, and then Green gets down at ten. So I and honestly, I don't know if I'd move a Danny Green for I'd move him for Barnes. I'd move Green for Barnes, but I don't know if I'm moving Green for Gordon. I would move him for Gordon because Danny Green, I don't think, is that good anymore. He's a shell of himself. He's a good teammate and a good locker room guy. But, like, his last great season was, I want to say it was 2018. So, like, he he hasn't been the same Danny Green in a while where Eric Gordon hasn't really shown the the wear on his legs yeah. as much. Yeah, I, I did, yeah. So I, I would probably still do a deal because of that that perspective. Um, but Danny Green, uh, from the other aspect, does have a fun podcast to listen to at times. Uh, speaking of podcasts, so if people want to uh, check that out. But going back to Ben. So is the Yang. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I did not know that. Okay, well, there we go. Learn something new every day. But when it comes to the Sixers uh, as a whole, going back to Ben Simmons, because you talk about the patience is a virtue, uh, my question would be, we had a trade that was rumored. I don't know if you read the article about it, but one of the things was if they couldn't get the big star thing, like you were saying, the Sixers wanted to get Hal Burton and a first or two first from the King. What's your ceiling for like a Ben Simmons trade? Like if they did that and then you went, well, these firsts are probably assets to the one first is not likely to be drafted by us. It's likely to be traded for something else. Like what's your, thought on if we end up having to make a trade like that anyway from waiting compared to like if we just made a trade like that now and then use the first round pick to get other assets and Daryl Morey worked the Morey magic basically and uh, was able to to do his thing because that's my big thing if we end up getting a trade like that in the end it's more why did we wait just to do a trade like that in my own thoughts yeah I think it's a tough question what the what the minimum and what the ceiling is on, on what you do for a Sims deal. I think if you're going off based off what we've seen reported, I mean obviously we will never know if it was actually offered. We don't know everything, but the deal I think I would regret if I was Maury not taking if what was true. And I think this is a deal that the Sixers really should have taken was the deal that came out with the Detroit Pistons. And you get Jeremy Grant, Sadiq Bey, Kelly Olenek, and a first-round pick from the Pistons. And just Sadiq Bey has been getting just, better and better exponentially. Just, as time. just for Ben Simmons. Yeah. Uh, that, is, that is a deal the Sixers should have went through. And I get it. People don't want to get Grant because we had him already. But you know what? Grant's improved this game tremendously. Bay's already on, on a huge uprise. And if you add him, if you add those two guys and the pieces with this team and the open shots they'd be able to get and play their game, it'd go a long, long way for this team. So I, that is the deal. I don't know if that answers your question on kind of the package I would be willing. To no, that does because that answers the question on like where your ceiling would be, like where yeah. your player would be and what you would want is the. It's not your biggest names. It's not your favorite names. It's not your top ten superstar names. But that was a deal. I mean, I'm just saying, you put that together. You look at that roster. You would have went Maxi. Curry, Grant, Harris, and Bede. Off the bench, Green, Thibel, Bay, Korkmaz, Drummond, Niang. I'm sure I'm missing somebody off the top of my head. Um, Milton, but, oh, you said Shake. Yeah, Shake Milton when he comes back. So, And that's that's going 12 guys. Obviously, you're going to cut that down, too, when you get to playoffs. But that's 12 guys you can go deep there. So that is the – and I even mentioned Kelly Olenek, which I think you might end up buying out if you actually did that deal. But even that would I be a, like a solid veteran backup on your team, and then you have a first round pick to move, even if you had wanted to add another shooter and say an Eric Gordon. So, like that, that, that's why that deal that could have went a long, long way for this team. I was disappointed when I saw we didn't even think about that deal. No, I agree because Sadiq Bay, like I said, he's improved uh, significantly since entering the league, is and it's gotten significantly better as an all around scorer and shooter. Where obviously that's exactly checkpoint what the Sixers want on their team to add. Uh, for Ben Simmons. And then Jeremy Grant has really gotten better as an all-around player uh, since leaving the Philadelphia 76ers and has made a very good career for himself. So him coming in, he would be a veteran starter. You allow some deep bay to come off of the bench. You have a first-round pick that, like you said, you'd probably flip because of cap. You probably couldn't do it for Gordon, but there has to be somebody that only gets paid a couple million bucks out there. I don't know them all off the top of my head, but I'm sure if we looked, that you would say is a dead-eye shooter 
that the Sixers could have been able to flip a first round pick if they did that deal for and brought that person in that then would have fit into the fold and been able to be a very great bench shooter, kind of like the Seth Curry of the bench, so to speak. So you would have not had to rely so much on the Isaiah Joes um, of the world or Bay coming in, who, like I said, is more of a very good all around scorer. So you don't want to have to camp him at the three point line to, to um, have to limit his game. Like exactly. they tried to do with Harris before, which did not work. So like, you have to let people be themselves. And and sometimes uh, the Sixers roster at times didn't allow that. Where being able to do a trade like that, I think, would have allowed guys to be themselves a little bit more than even the current structure of the of the team allows, which is doing really good. But one of the big reasons it's doing really good is Tyrese Maxey is probably going to win the most improved player or is one of the guys for it in his second season. And they probably don't usually give those out to sophomores because they probably, but, but, but he definitely is a guy that could be in it. Um, and Bede's probably the MVP right now. And I, and ever since I trash talked to Bias Harris, he's been playing even better. So I'm going to just keep throwing that in there anytime he pisses me off. So then he can play well. Uh, but the, and then Seth Curry is one of the best shooters in the league. And even at 41% or whatever, that's one of his worst season shooting. When you're shooting 41% from three, and it's one of your worst season shooting. That's when you know you're one of the better three point shooters in the damn league. Uh, so you got that. It's just exactly what you said. It's about adding eyes that fit into the fold. And that's why I think that trade with Ben Simmons would have worked the best because you would have added two guys that immediately impact you. You would have got Kelly Olinick, that's a blah player, but still a good veteran, like you said, that can make some shots and space the floor if you don't buy him out. And then you have a first round pick that you can play with. So that, that to me, was definitely the best trade where just because of the picks to play with, I would have said the second one, if it was reported, that would have been the best because you got a shooter and picks would have by default been Hal Burton. Because if you just did, even if we were able to do Fox for Simmons, that limits you because you're just getting a point guard for a point guard. And then you're getting a guy, like I said before the podcast, similar play styles to your player that's already ascending into an all-star point guard and Maxi. So I think he would ended up just being traded again later. So that would have just been a domino effect trade anyway, but you get somebody that you probably just end up trading again later. So they wouldn't so you could have just got Halbert in two first if that would have actually been realistic, like that was reported in the one thing. And then you would have had two firsts to potentially trade, and you would have also had one of the better developing shooters that's I think like six six. So he's not he's not a small dude either, so he can shoot over people. He's either six five or six six. So uh, that would have been a decent thing, but then the Kings in the end didn't end up uh, wanting to give him up. So we obviously talked about our opinions on what we feel overall about the Ben Simmons saga, what we feel about what trades we would have done, uh, where we agreed on that. And I also gave another one on what I thought we I would have potentially done just because I know Maury can work his magic with draft picks if he got especially Kings level draft picks. Uh, so I think that could have potentially uh, worked out a little bit there. But because it looks like we're going to hold on to Ben Simmons, you hinted at it a little bit when you said you still want to improve the team and get guys. What do you think the Sixers are really going to be able to play on? Because we mentioned guys that get paid a little bit more than we thought in the Eric Gordon. Do you think they're really going to play the, be able to play the trade market a lot to make these additions? Or is it going to be more like the one year we added the Marco Bellinelli's of the world and made very good additions by via the buyout market of other teams? that aren't where they want to be. They end up buying out guys they can't trade. And then we make acquisitions that way, uh, rather being able to get, get trades. Like what, what do you think the Sixers uh, are actually really going to end up being able to do to make the best acquisitions of the team without being able to trade Ben Simmons so they can have a better ceiling than, say, second round or maybe conference finals and then, unfortunately, going home type deal and maybe get to where we want to get to and, be a surprise because if they make the finals I think most people would say this season that would be a surprise finals run for the team with all the Ben Simmons saga and yada 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 so like in order to make those chances better what do you think they can do without trading Ben Simmons because it doesn't seem like that's going to happen yeah I'd say ask me that question in a week when we get closer (laughs) so we know what the buyout market's going to look like I think that's going to play a big role in it obviously but there's going to be options both ways. And we talked about Eric Gordon. I mean, the Utah Jazz just lost Joe Engels, so they might be willing to move some veterans. They got Jordan Clarkson and a backup point guard you might be able to bring in uh, via trade. Then you go to the buyout market. Gordon Dragic was, is 
are going to hit that mark is what it sounds like we just saw a few days ago. I would you like him as a backup. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned John Wall earlier on the show. I'm not a huge fan of him, but and I don't know if you take a backup role, but I'm sure you've heard the big rumors, uh, Lakers and Rockets, Russell Westbrook for John Wall and all that. So if Westbrook goes to the Rockets or even another team, I'd expect him to be a, a buyout option. And is he willing to take up a, ba- a backup role? Because I don't want to mess up that starting lineup chemistry. So, yeah, I would probably still start Maxi over Westbrook. I, st- I think John Wall, if he got bought out, in my opinion, would be more willing at this point because he hasn't even played yeah. this season to take a backup role. He also fit the, the Sixers a lot better. So yeah, I'd, yeah, yeah. That that too. Then um, Russ, who at this point is starting to show the first signs of stepping back and not being the same guy. Where Wall did average, I think it was like twenty last season. Uh, that just the Rockets did, or didn't want to play him at all this year because they're trading him, and then haven't been able to trade him yet, so they might have to buy him out. Is he the best fit? No, because he's not the best overall shooter. But it's just it, it's more doing what you can do without being able to trade Ben Simmons and doing the best you can to be able to get a good backup and get a good guy in. And John Wall's been here, done that. He'll be a good guy in the locker room as well for a guy like Maxi. Uh, he also has that kind of alpha, like, drive mentality that's always good to add to a locker room as well that I only on defense would ever accuse Ben Simmons of ever um, having. Um, so... I, I think uh, he brings a little bit of a different mentality to the team as well. That's why I wouldn't mind bringing it. Now, Russ has the second thing I said. He just has a completely different personality than John Wall. Th- that's all it is. Where I don't know if his personality would be the best to bring into the Sixers locker room that's doing well right now, despite the whole Ben Simmons thing. No, I agree. Here, here's a Kings deal. I, I was looking up some of these possible options. Here's a Kings deal I would absolutely do on the Ben Simmons stuff front. And, you know, I love I love Furcon Korkmaz, but I, I support this on SportsIllustrated.com four hours ago. Ben Simmons and Furcon Korkmaz for Harrison Barnes, Buddy Heald, and two first-round picks. I don't even think twice about that. Yeah, because that one you're getting the shooting in Buddy Heald and Harrison Barnes, because Harrison Barnes can shoot as a big uh, stretch player. So you're getting the shooting in both of those guys. Um, Harrison Barnes obviously plays very good defense. Uh, and then you're getting the you said two first round picks, right? So you're getting yeah. Yeah, you're getting. Yeah, I'm so, just moving like, that. I'm just moving that for somebody else. Exactly. So that's even better than the Halliburton trade because you're getting two guys that really help plus two first. Where with Halliburton you're getting a young developing shooter plus two first. So yeah, yeah that trade I that trade I would do because Buddy Heald would come in immediately, be a great player off your. Uh, bench most likely as your uh, guy behind Seth, and then you have two um, elite-level shooters potentially up there. Because Buddy Hill, I think, with less pressure on him, which you would have with the Sixers because you already have Seth Curry doing his thing uh, as the starter, that will also probably make him produce better without having to have the whole, well, you're the dude, you're the guy that we're relying on to be the number one shooter. We already have that in Seth Curry. No, exactly, and that's why there's so many options. That's why, and that's why I trust Maury because there's just there's so many different ways he can go with it at the deadline, and I think that's what actually makes this deadline a little exciting for for the uh, Sixers here, which is uh, February 10th for those who don't know. So a little over a week uh, from now, week week tomorrow, uh, that will be happening. So but, something we also didn't give Maury credit for is it wasn't a draft pick or anything like that. But also bringing in a guy when Embiid's out. Dwight Howard was Dwight Howard. We loved him while he was here, but he was a backup center. When he started, it was like hell was froze over and the world was ending and the sky was falling. and like, But like he just for some reason couldn't start anymore. Yeah. Uh, where with Andre Drummond, anytime he started, and I've been watch, and I've actually wa- been watching the game. I've been, like, I've actually felt comfortable. Now, do I really love Andre Drummond starting? That's a completely different conversation. But I've been comfortable with when he's been out there starting, and he's g- gave good performances. Where that's exactly what you want out of a backup center. That when he needs to come in to start, I like that pickup more than when we had Dwight. I think he fits into the team better because when he needs to start, he produces better as a starter, at least defensively and rebounding wise, uh, where a guy like Dwight Howard was just kind of there where he was yeah. only used really uh, utilized well when he was as a backup. 
like a dead a, a dead ass backup yeah. and just never started real. No, I agree with that. I mean, you don't win you don't win that Memphis Grizzlies game with uh Joy Howard. Like no. honestly. No, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. So yeah. I mean <laughs> that, there's one win for you there and the, so no, yeah, I I don't know why. I mean, I'll never understand it, but I don't know why people don't have trust in Mori and faith in Mori. I mean there's he's done nothing but good Maury, things. I d I don't think it's Mori, honestly. I think that that's just my opinion. I've seen it on Twitter. Okay, okay. Well, from Twitter, yeah, that might be the. But like with me, like my whole thing is with patience is a virtue. If we end up just getting a picks and prospect trade in the end, that's because of what you said at the beginning and what Stephen A. might have brought up. If ownership ended up holding them back when we could have maybe got a buddy yield, um, a, a Harrison Barnes and two first, but they went well. No, we want a more star player than those names. Well. That's not really Daryl Morey anything at his fault. That's me going, well, now we just have another ownership problem to add to the list of ownership problems in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, so, like, the, the, that, that's, all, that, that's all that would be at that point. No, I, I agree with that. But as we wrap this one up on the Ben Simmons saga... Um, and talking about some trades we think we could do without involving Ben Simmons and involving Ben Simmons. What do you think um, the ceiling really is without being, if we can't trade Ben Simmons by the 10th and make the other moves via the buyout market and mix in trades to get shooting? What do you think the ceiling really is of this team? Because they brought it up on NBA Today when I was watching it the other day where the Heat um, and the Bucks. And Brooklyn and others haven't all been haven't all been full force this year. What we saw when the Sixers, without Simmons, had their team come back, how good they went on a run. So they're saying that could echo with those other teams. If that happens, what do we think? If these teams do start coming back, you do have the Bulls as the surprise top notch team in the right above us right now by a game. What do you think the overall Eastern Conference ceiling is like? They they the regular season. I think they could win the East potentially just by the regular season numbers. But like you said, the playoffs are a different game. What do you think their seal would be end game in the in the uh, season? Where do you think their end ceiling is going to be this year? All right, I'll answer this in two ways. If you stay with the roster with what's constructed right now, Eastern Conference Finals champion, or Eastern Conference champions is your ceiling. I think with what you got right now, you can go out and win a seven-game series against anybody in this conference. I mean, the Bulls are beatable. Celtics are beatable. Heat are beatable. Bucks are beatable. Nets are beatable. Kyrie came and playing home games, so he's going to miss half the series, even if it goes seven games. So there's nobody in this conference that's not beatable. Now you go with what's Cleveland's constructed. Beatable. Yeah. Yeah. Left Cleveland, uh, yeah. You go, you go up against the Suns, the Warriors. I know we just beat them, but the Grizzlies in a seven-game series, with what's constructed right now, now I'm a little shaky. I think you beat the Grizzlies if they made it out of the West. But the Suns and the Warriors, I don't think you'd be able to beat them in a seven-game series. I'd probably pick one of them in like six. Yeah. Now, if you go out and get an Eric Gordon, you go out and get a Harrison Barnes or whatever other guy we mentioned throughout the show, then I think they are beatable. I I think this is one of the most open NBA seasons we've had in a very long time. And that that's why I think people are getting frustrated with the patience thing and all that. But I think no, I think it's a very open NBA season. And there's nobody, in, especially no, especially in the Eastern Conference, there's nobody that I sit here and say the Sixers can't beat. And you can call me a homer if, I want, if you want, but that – I truly believe that, and maybe you disagree with me. I'm interested to see what your response is, but you cannot tell me that the Sixers can't beat uh, one of these teams in a seven-game series. I just don't buy it. I mean, if you have you mentioned Embiid's playing MVP level, he's probably his MVP right now. He can go toe to toe with Giannis. Tobias Harris can go toe to toe with Chris Middleton. Max, he can go toe to toe. I mean, he went toe to toe with John Moran. He can go toe to toe with Drew Holiday. I mean, again, they. You match up the stars. My stars. biggest concern would be just the veteran presence of what Kyle Lowry brings at the point guard position and the dog that Jimmy Butler is. My biggest concern would honestly be Miami. Of all of all the teams 
that you brought up, my my big my biggest one of all those teams would honestly end up uh, being Miami because then you also got if he's healthy, um, you would have a uh, Victor Oladipo there who is still a good player, not what he once was, but still a good player. You have obviously um, Tyler Hero who's a very good shooter. So I think, and then Duncan Robinson, who's an elite shooter. Uh, Adebayo is a good center. So I think that team, now he's not going to stop and beat him. He's going to get hit. But the thing is, I think that team does match up the best against us when it comes to a seven game series. And now I agree with you, but again, I'm not saying it's going to be an easy walk to the finals. I'm just saying the ceiling is the finals because you can physically beat any one of those teams in a seven game series. No, I absolutely agree with you. Miami matches up well, the Bucks will match up well. And honestly, at this point, Call me crazy, but I'm honestly more afraid of the Heat and the Bucks than I am the Nets. Their chemistry is just not there. They can't stay healthy. And again, Kyrie's going to miss half the series anyway. So I'd honestly put the Nets third or fourth on the team I'm most afraid of in the East. And the Bulls are more the San Francisco Giants of basketball where it's like, I agree with that. Um, going. Let's see, like, like, let's see what they do once they get into the postseason after this very impressive uh, season here, and then and then be able to judge because yes, Lonzo's done his thing. Yes, so Zach Levine's always done his thing for Chicago. Uh, DeMar DeRozan's been good, but the thing is, will they be limited at the three point line when it comes to the playoffs? Because they don't have the sexiest consistent three point shooting. So if they get into a shootout, I don't necessarily think the Bulls are going to ever really uh, win a game in that fashion when it comes to a three point uh, contest. If if the other team is just nailing the threes left and right, so. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that team does, but I, I agree in it with in the most part that I think we could still be most teams. It's more if guys end up coming back, these teams go in the same run as the Sixers. It's more like ask in a it, like you said in a couple of weeks because if they're if everybody's kind of really hot going into the end of the season, the Sixers aren't going to have any advantage like they have now being the hottest, one of the hottest teams in the conference because everybody else would then be saying, well, we're coming in really. Uh, so, like, minus Miami, who's doing really good now. So, like, the, the the thing is, it's going to be interesting to see coming to the head because my thing with the Sixers in the playoffs is sometimes I feel it is this is the most open league, but it's always important to have your yeah. very good Robin to your MVP Batman in the postseason where Toby's a very good player, but to be a Robin, it's more like Russell Westbrook to Kevin Durant, where like Tobias Harris isn't at the Russell Westbrook level to what Russell Westbrook was to Kevin Durant. If you get what I'm trying to say, it's more like uh, the uh, star players. And some of the best is just the other guys exponentially better than you. It's just, you're still a very good all-star where like with Toby, it's, he's a very good, all-star level player, but not like the star in terms of being one of the goats of the uh, league, which at one point Russell Westbrook was when he was with uh, Kevin Durant. So that's the only limitation, I think, where if they do pull it together, you would say um, Brooklyn has the combination. The Heat, you wouldn't really say, is a combination. They're more of a team that wins by coaching uh, and their team structure. Um, but, But that's just like... How, how I always give shout outs to coaches in hockey for being able to just bring together the structure. Uh, you have to do that with the Miami heat. So uh, I think they could win just based off of that, where Brooklyn would probably have the best Batman Robin. If you, if you're going off of that, where um, an underrated one would be ball and, uh, and Levine. But the thing is we have to see what they what that team is all can do in the postseason. So yeah, with that question. But uh, I think that about wraps us up as we went over this Ben Simmons saga and the latest sports fan news Sixers podcast. I'll turn it over to Andrew to see if he has any final thoughts and to give where you can find him at. Um, again, just be patient, be patient, be patient. I remember saying the same exact words when everybody was freaking out when the Sixers were, what, the five or six seed, I think, on our last Sixers podcast. And now we're up at the two spot, one game out of first. So, again, patient, patient, patient. This team's got what it takes to win it, and uh, yeah, I think that's the the best word to use. As you mentioned, patience is a virtue, and don't forget that. And uh, you can find me at AJ underscore Santangelo on Twitter. Yeah. I think the thing to echo is my closing thought 
how we talked about the East doesn't really have any spaced out team that's exponentially above everybody. From first to last place, and if we want to even include the Celtics, who are in ninth right now, wouldn't even be in the postseason if if, if everything got cut. Uh, the go ahead. Well, they do that uh, playing stuff. Oh, now, so. they're doing that nine ten thing again. Yeah, so the top ten teams will get in the playoffs. Okay, well, fine. The stupid Celtics and Hawks would be in the postseason then. Um, even then, with those undeserving teams in the postseason. Uh, we would have the we would have a eight game difference between um, first and then tenth. Where if it was still the eight, which it usually would be without COVID, then it would be a five and a half game difference between first and last. So the so the East is 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 really close from even top to bottom. Where when you look at the Western Conference, the Phoenix Suns, uh, obviously Golden State's doing the thing at a thirty nine and thirteen. They're exponentially above everybody, and then Phoenix is exponentially above it. So they have the separation of it, and then eighth is sixteen and a half back, and tenth is twenty and a half back. So, like you were saying, it's completely different in the West and the East. Nobody has really separated themselves from each other. So that should have Murrin in saying how this is kind of going to come down to a bloodbath fight. It seems in the playoffs to see who represents the Eastern Conference because it's so tight this year. Um, going down to the uh, end and coming into the trade deadline, which is why the trade deadline is going to be the ultimate key to see who propels themselves over the top um, when it comes to these teams that are so interlocked. But for me, you can find me at JJBorek26 on Twitter. We thank you for joining us for the latest edition of the Sports Fan News Sixers podcast. Have a great, safe, and pleasant week, everybody. Go Sixers. Let's keep the great streak going. Peace out, everyone.